Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome to the reading of the Elder Scrolls. Today, I'm going to be reading Bone, Part 1, by Taffy Drumyo. It seems to me, said Garrus, thoughtfully, looking into the depths of his flin, that all great ideas come from pure happenstance. Take, for instance, the story I told you last night about my cousin. If he hadn't fallen off that horse, he never would have become one of the Empire's most foremost alchemists. It was late one minute's night at the King's Ham, and the regulars were always especially inclined toward philosophy. I disagree, replied Zioma, firmly but politely. Great ideas and inventions are often most wait are most often formed slowly over time by diligence and hard work. If you recall my tale from last month, the young lady who I assure you is based on a real person only recognized her one true love after she had slept with practically everyone in North Point. I brought it to you that neither is the case, said Halgrid, pouring a topper on his mug of grief. The greatest inventions are created by extraordinary need. Must I remind you of the story I told some time ago about Aslik Owen and the invention of bone mold? The problem with your theory is that your example is entirely fictional, sniffed Zayama. Um, I don't believe I remember the story of Aslik Owen and the invention of bone mold, frowned Garris. Are you sure you told us? Well, this happened many, many years ago, when Vardenfell was a beauteous green land. When Dunmo and Chamo and Dwemo and Nord lived together in relative peace. When they weren't trying to kill one another. How good relaxed in his chair, warming to his theme. Oh god, is this going to be the main voice of this entire book? I hope not, because I picked the wrong voice to do it. <laughs> when the sun and moon all hung in the sky together. Lord, mother and wizard. Grumbled Exima. If I'm going to be forced to hear your ridiculous story again, pray don't embellish and make it any longer than it has to be. This all happened in Vardenfeld. Wait. Oh, there's quotation marks, but there should be. Hmm. I mean, there aren't quotation marks, but there should be. This all happened in Vardenfeld quite some time ago, said Halgrid, ignoring Zayma's interruption with admirable restraint. During an era of a king, you would have never, you, you would never have heard of, as Lark Owen was one of this king's nobles, and very, very disagreeable fellow. Because of his allegiance to the crown, the king had felt the need to grant him a castle and land. But he didn't, oh god, is this, I need, I need to change this guy's voice right now, okay. So I'm not gonna make it through this. How long is this book? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Okay. Anyway, where are we? About me! To grant it. Wait, I'm just gonna do a normal voice. Alright. I felt the need to grant him a castle and land. But I didn't necessarily want him as a neighbor, so the land he granted was far from civilization. Right in an area of Vardenfell that is, even today, not quite civilized to this day. Why did he said today twice? It's fine. Aslok Owen built a walled stronghold and settled down with his unhappy slaves to enjoy a quiet, if somewhat grim, life. It was not long before his stronghold's integrity was tested. A tribe of cannibalistic Nords, cannibalistic Nords? Such a thing exists? had been living in the valley for some time, mostly dining on one another. <laughs> Gross. But occasionally foraging uh, what they liked 
to call dark meat. The Denma. But, that, but you said they were Chima. Hmm. Zinma. Zinma laughed with uh, appreciation. Marvelous. I don't remember from that from before. It's funny how you don't hear much about the Nord's rampant cannibalism nowadays. This was obviously, as I've said, quite some time ago, said Halgrid, glaring at part of his audience with civil mal malevolence. And things were, in many ways, quite different. His cannibalistic Nords began attacking Aslik's own slaves in the fields, and then slowly grew bolder, until they held the very stronghold itself under siege. They were quite a fearsome sight, you can imagine a horde of wide, wild-eyed men and women with dagger-like teeth filed to tear flesh, wielding massive clubs cloaked only in the skins of their victims. As Lyric Owen assumed that if he ignored them, they'd go away. Unfortunately, the first thing that the Nords did was to poison the stream that carried water into the walled stronghold. But if they poison the, f the the guys, then they won't be able to eat them because they'll die from poison. It's just stupid. It's really dumb, anyway. Whatever. Um, all the livestock and most of the slaves died very quickly before this was discovered. There was no hope to, of rescue at least for several months when the king's emissaries would come reluctantly to visit the disagreeable vassal. The next closest source of water was on the other side of the hill, so Aslak Owen sent three of his slaves with empty jugs to bring some back. They were beaten with clubs and eaten before they were a few feet outside the stronghold gates. The next group he sent through, he gave sticks to defend themselves. They made it a few feet farther, but were also overwhelmed, beaten, and devoured. This was obvious, so it was obvious, that better personal defense was required. As Lark Owen said, uh, went to talk to his armorer, one of his few slaves with specific talents and duties. Oops, I double clicked. No, you didn't. Oh. The, sh the slave, wait, do, 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 do the voice you did before. No, I'm going to do this voice. The slaves need armor if they're going to make it to the river and back, he said. Collect every scrap of steel and iron you can find, every hinge, knife, ring, cup, everything that isn't needed to keep the wall sturdy. Smelt it and give me the most and the best armor you can very, very quickly. Well, that was, that was, uh, Atlantic Owen. The armor whose lane was Gothric, Gothric, was used to act like Owen's demands and knew that there was there could be no compromise in the quality and quantity of the armor, or the speed at which he worked. I feel like I've read this book before. Yeah, what's the name of this book again? Bone. This isn't a book in. It's not a book in Daggerfall, is it? You better look this up because I. F I don't think so. I think you've read it. I think you read it in Skyrim, like, a long time ago. That makes more sense. Anyway, he labored for 30 hours without a break. Wow. And recall without any water to slake, slake his thirst as he struggled with the kiln and anvil until finally he had six suits of mixed metal armor. Six slaves were chosen, clad in the armor, and sent with jars to collect river water. At first, the mission, progressed, the mission progressed well. The Nords attacked the armored slaves with their clubs, but they continued their march forward, warding off the blows. Gradually, however, the slaves seemed to be walking uncertainly, dazed by the endless barrage. Eventually, one by one, they fell. The armor was peeled from their bodies, and they were eaten. I feel like the uh, Skyrim version wasn't about Nords. Hmm. I'll look this book up, hang on. Let me type this in bone. Uh, who's, who's talking? Oh, 
The slaves couldn't move quickly enough and not have an army made, says Athletic Owen to Gothric. I need you to collect all the cadavers of the poisoned livestock. Strip their skin and give me the best, the most and the best leather armor you can. Very, very quickly. Well, leather armor is not going to stop their attacks. Oh, whatever. What the fuck is bone? Lore, bone. It is a Skyrim book, FYI. Now, my main question is, is it a book from, uh, nope, Morrowind and Skyrim. Hmm. So is the Skyrim version slightly different? I don't know. Oh, it was in Dragonborn. It was in Dragonborn. Oh, it wasn't in the base game. Huh. Interesting. Where's the, where do they talk about it? Um. Um. Sorry, give me just a second. I just want to confirm that they are, in fact, talking about... Yep, no, it's the same book. Okay. Talk about Nords. Fair enough. Where was I? Gothric did as he was... I'm pretty sure I've read this book, though. I might have even read it in... Uh... I didn't really do book readings in my Dragonborn playthrough, did I? I don't know. I feel like I did everything. I recorded everything that I did in Dragonborn. Maybe I did. Anyway, Gothric did as he was told... Though it was a particularly repulsive task, given the rancid state of the livestock. Normally it takes quite a time to treat and cure leather, so I understand. But Gothric worked at it tirelessly, and in half a day, damn, in a half a day. Pretty sure you don't need one of those A's. You can say in half, in a half day, yes, that's right. You can say in a half day or in a half a day, but whatever. Never mind Sometimes my um, linguistic uh, tertiary education really does me a disservice because I can't stop arguing semantics. Anyway, not that I'm, I'm not a grammar Nazi. No, I'm not a grammar Nazi. I, I fully embrace the concept of uh, language evolution. That language is constantly evolving and there is no, oh no, the language is going to the dogs. No, it's just, you know, it's just getting better. It's not getting better. It's changing to suit the need of the people of the times. That's why we don't speak Elizabethan anymore. Thank God. <laughs> anyway, uh, where was I? Yes, in half a day, he had 12 suits of leather armor. 12 slaves were chosen, clad in the armor, and sent with jars to collect river water. They progressed at first, much better than the earlier expedition, to fell almost immediately, but the others had some luck outmaneuvering their assailants while deflecting an occasional blow of the club. Several got to the river, three were able to fill up their jars, and one fellow very nearly made it back to the stronghold gates. Alas, he fell and was eaten. The Nords possessed a remarkably healthy appetite. What? Wait, what's his voice again? What we need? I've forgotten his voice already. The slaves couldn't... Okay, what... I, I'm trying to... I need S's in the words. What we need, before I completely run out of slaves, <laughs> said Aslan Oric, I mean Aslik Owen, thoughtfully to Gothric, is an armor sturdier than the leather but lighter than metal? Oh, you mean medium armor? Which coincidentally doesn't exist in Skyrim. <clears throat> or maybe it does exist. Wait, does medium armor... Because you're right, um... Go, what's the name of the armor? The ice armor. Holy shit, I've completely forgotten the name of the armor. Am I not wearing it right now? Yes, I am. It just says ice armor. Starwin, that's what it's called. It's called Starwin armor, thank you. Um, that is medium armor in this game, right? And Yep. But I... Pretty sure it's just heavy armor in Skyrim. Unless they introduced medium armor in the Dragon Ball DLC. Not really sure. Where are we? <laughs> I've lost my spot. Uh, here we are. Right. Yes. The armor had already considered that and taken stock of the materials available. He had thought about doing something with stone or wood. Wood? Wood armor? Seems kind of stupid. But there were practical problems. Yeah. With demolishing more than the more of the stronghold. Yes, that's true. 
The next most prevalent, also stone is pretty fucking heavy. The, the next uh, prevalent stuff present in the stronghold was skinned dead bodies, hunks of muscle, ugh, fat, blood, and bone. <gasps> bone mold armor! You, you're so clever. <laughs> anyway. For six hours, he toiled relentlessly until he produced 18 suits of bone mold. The first ones ever created. As Luke Owen was somewhat dubious at the sight and smell. But he was very thirsty. Thirsty? Oh, because water. Right. I thought it was like, oh, I want to drink some bone mold. I don't know. And willing to sacrifice another 18 slaves if necessary. Hmm. My eyes were dressed. Gothrek queried tremendously. Having the slaves practice moving about in the armor here in the courtyard before sending them to face the north. I've definitely read this book before. Yeah, I remember it now. As like Owen coolly allowed and allowed it, and for a few hours the slaves wandered about the stronghold courtyard in their suits of bone mold. They grew used to the give of the droids, the rigid, rigidity, rigidity of the backplate, and weight pushed onto their shoulders and hips. They discovered how to plant their feet slightly askew to keep their balance steady. How to quickly turn, pivoting without falling down. How to break into a run and stop quickly. By the time they were sent out of the castle gates, they were easily, very nearly, almost amateurs in the use of their medium weight armour. Seventeen of them were killed and eaten, well, but one made it back with a jar of water. It's, wait, what's the, it's perfect nonsense, said Ismael. But my point is still valid even so. Like all great inventors, even in fiction, the armor worked diligently to create the bowl. The armor worked diligently to create the bone mold. Wait, what's Garrus's voice again? I think there was a good great, good deal of happenstance as well, frowned Garrows. But it is an appealing, appalling story. I wish you hadn't told me. If you think that's appalling, Grinhalden, you should hear what happened next. Da da da! To be continued in part two. That was Bone, part one, by Tavi Dromion. And this has been another reading of the Elder Scrolls, but for now, my name is Leo, and I will see you next time.